Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a mono red aggro deck built around connecting the dots. This two mana enchantment says whenever a creature you control attacks, exile the top card of your library face down, and then for one other red, so we can discard our hand and sacrifice this enchantment to put all those exiled cards back into our hand. Now, when first reading Connecting the Dots, I did not realize that we get to exile a card for each attacking creature. So if we're attacking with three creatures, we get to exile three cards face down, so that can add up very quickly. And before you know it, you can sacrifice Connecting the Dots and essentially get a brand new opening hand, which can be quite powerful. So to maximize Connecting the Dots, our deck is filled with cheap creatures with haste, so we can immediately deploy them and exile additional cards with our enchantment. So taking a look at our one drops, there's the new Frantic Scapegoat, a 1-1 with haste that essentially also comes with menace and it cannot block and we can suspect a future creature to also give it menace and it cannot block. Then there's the Spear Guard, a 1-1 that will leave behind a 1-1 rat token when it dies. And then Kumano doesn't need an introduction, will also eventually turn into a 2-2 with haste. Swiss Spear is still one of the best one drops in standard and of course also an inclusion in this deck. Plenty of ways to enable prowess. And then a Phoenix Chick, an evasive 1-1 one -one that can maybe also come back from the graveyard if we attack with enough creatures, which can certainly happen in this deck. And then at 2 mana we've got a few more haste creatures with Felden, and then 2 copies of Charming Scoundrel. We also tend to empty our hand pretty quickly, so the Scoundrel discarding and drawing can actually just draw us a card if we're empty handed, and sometimes we'll get that uh, treasure token or wicked roll token instead. And then we've got a few burn spells to either close out the game or clear a path for our creatures to keep attacking, 4 copies of Play with Fire, and we recently also got Shock back in standard. And then Witch Talker Frenzy we can often cast for just a single rat to deal 5 to a creature, so that can also clear larger blockers. So yeah, the game plan is pretty simple, just get on the board quickly, hope to draw connecting the dots, and then reap the rewards. And then the mana base is just 19 mountains, and the Crucible can't really make room for the uh, creature lands since it's colorless, and as you can see we've got a lot of red to one mana requirements, so it's difficult to include it. But uh, yeah, otherwise that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, definitely gonna keep, but uh, we are missing removal. So being on the draw could mean that we're on the back foot against aggro. For now, let's maybe Phoenix check. Opponent on the domain deck and they already have the full domain so they can cast a one mana binding. So we don't want them to exile or connecting the dots if we can avoid it. For now we could scoundrel make a treasure, cast another one drop. Maybe Kumano. And then they might binding the Kumano, which I think is fine. Opponent just untaps, so they still have a Leyline Binding in hand that we suspect. Now it's also kind of a delicate balance between not overextending into a Sunfall, but uh, yeah, hopefully we get our connecting the dots going in the meantime. But uh, if I cast it now, it's definitely getting exiled before I get any value. So I think we just triple one drop. and just discarding a herd migration. Okay. And there's the binding, so we flushed it out. Hopefully they don't have a second one and connecting the dots can go off. But we're committing at this point. Just another herd migration, that's fine. But uh, I guess a uh, Sunfall's pretty likely now. Oh, never mind, they also had a Binding. Yeah, that's rough. Tried to play around one of them, but uh, difficult to play around both.
At least no Sunfall this turn. And there's another connecting the dots, so we get another chance. Exile five cards. So that's going to be a nice present waiting for us. Opponent with another herd migration. They're still two turns away from casting an Atraxa, and their hand is mostly lands. Maybe the uh, Archangel of Wrath can sort of stabilize them. Up the Beanstalk instead. And yeah, let's just go for it. Phoenix Chick attack. Exile six cards. Opponent's got a Wandering Emperor. Frenzy sadly doesn't damage Planeswalkers. My people must contend with me. And etching down. Now we could frenzy our own etching, just so we deny the life gain, but it wouldn't be lethal here. So we'll let that go. You're done. And then we haven't made our land drop yet. So I think I'll discard a few lands to hand size in order to make that happen. And Kumano can finish off Wandering Emperor. Opponent's at 5, discard some lands. And we'll see if they've got an Atraxa. Depopulate instead to wipe the board, still leaves us with a few tokens. And I guess we'll go for Spear Guard to get the plus one counter. We can also get back Phoenix Chick from the graveyard, and that's enough for a concession. Awesome! Connecting the dots, proving its worth. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is a little bit creature light. No connecting the dots either. I think this is a mulligan. Okay, this is acceptable. And then... Let's say we keep Scapegoat over Spear Guard. Turn one Kumano. And then we can double spell Scapegoat and Swiss Spear, perhaps. Facing a red white Convoke, maybe. So taking out the Veteran now is maybe still worth it, since it's uh, probably going to gain the opponent more than two life over the course of the game. So let's Swiss Spear play with fire. Could also wait on play with fire until after we get uh, etching, so we actually exile the veteran. That might still be okay. Scapegoat is suspected, so it has menace. Another veteran, all right. Game one. And an inspector. Okay, that's uh, a lot of life gain here. And do we want to change our suspect? I don't think so. So we can play with fire as a veteran. And then Scoundrel can draw, or can enter with a Wicked Roll. I think we draw here, discard and draw, while Empty Handed essentially draws us a card. And then try to find Connecting the Dots. I did try End of Festivities in this deck as well, which can line up quite well against the Convoke deck specifically, although they also have a lot of two toughness creatures that don't die to it. Sometimes they play the new Anthem, giving creatures plus one plus one. So there are some cases where it doesn't line up properly. Double Felden's a little awkward, so we wouldn't mind trading this one off. Opponent likely setting up reinforcements, making a pair of one ones. Still fine to 
trade off some creatures here, I think. So our opponent gains two. And take out Inspector. And our opponent can start convoking. If they have a Gleeful Demolition, they can make three 1-1 one, one Goblins and gain three. And that looks to be the play. Nope, opponent just sacking a clue, maybe trying to hit their land drop. And they found it. Okay, let's go Phoenix Chick. And we can attack all out. Opponent falls to one. They cannot tap Battlefield Forge for white mana. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Some hasty creatures and connecting the dots. That's our game plan. Hopefully find more creatures and we don't have to face too much removal. Let's still connect the dots. Opponent Sultai colors. Okay, so let's say we go with Kumano into Scapegoat. Exile two more cards. And we've got a Witch Stalker Frenzy at the ready. This might be a Squirming Emergence deck. Trying to fill the graveyard. And yeah, this Terror Tide is going to be effective once they get to four mana. Already three lanes in graveyard. And now a Whale of the Forgotten. Going for a bit of card selection. And there's the Squirming Emergence. Shock the draw. Okay, so can shock to get a final prowess trigger. And then we could sacrifice connecting the dots in the opponent's end step. Alright, opponent does not go for Terror Tide, instead goes for Jace. Frenzy can only damage creatures, sadly. And yeah, even though they shrink down Swiss Spear, it can still enable connecting the dots for us. Shock the draw. So let's just go face. And then, yeah, I guess uh, we can hang on to the shock for now. Could also just shock now, cash in connecting the dots, maybe find another burn spell or hit or land drop. Can't really be a bad thing. Opponent's not close to reanimating anything scary with a squirming emergence. But I guess drawing eight is good enough here. Alright, not the most exciting hand, all things considered, but uh, should be enough to cross the finish line if they just Terror Tide. Bone's gonna draw. I know where to find all the answers. Gay's gonna be flashed back, so they are still maybe trying to set up a Squirming Emergence. And they were maybe hoping to mill an Atraxa, although we had it covered with our burn spell and menace creature anyway. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand feels like it doesn't pack enough of a punch, especially without connecting the dots to refuel. This one we can try. And then... I want to say ditch the spear guard. And it's the mono-red mirror match. 
And we have connecting the dots, although on the draw it might be a little clunky to deploy. We'll start with Kumano, so Swiss Spear is harder for the opponent to remove. Opponent on double Phoenix check. Alright, so we have a few options. Our opponent's somewhat likely to have a play with fire in hand. And I don't want them to take out a Swiss Spear. So maybe my play is just Swiss Spear, keep up shock. Or we can offer them a Phoenix check. And then if they play with fire Phoenix check, we aren't too disappointed. Because the problem is shock is not going to answer any relevant 3-drop except for maybe a squee. And I don't think I want to shock a Phoenix Chick just yet. So we're put on debating whether they want to take out our Phoenix Chick. And we might be able to get it back later in the game. If we have enough attackers. Opponent is splashing white, maybe for Lightning Helix, and they did have a Squee. So keeping up shock might have worked out a bit better. I think I gotta connect the dots while we can. Attack, and then we get to exile Squee thanks to etching of Kumano. So we don't have to worry about it. An alternative play, I guess, could have been play Swiss Spear, get back Phoenix Chick, but then we're not answering anything on the board. Okay, Mechanized Warfare makes sense. Now those 1 1 flyers hit us for 2. Okay, so yeah, we're bit on the back foot now. No way of blocking Phoenix Chick. A few ways we can approach it. I could play Swiss Spear and then attack all out, exiling three more cards so we can sack connecting the dots and then if we have land one mana removal spell we can cast it but then I guess the goblin token also gets to connect. So I guess the absolute safest play would be scoundrel, discard and hope to draw a removal spell. Or we can play Swiss Spear Play Scoundrel, leave Swiss Spear back for the Goblin token, and Scoundrel can discard and draw to net us a card. Found Frenzy, but don't have the land to cast it. So had we played a little differently, and uh, maybe gone Scoundrel, discard Swiss Spear, draw, then we would have been able to maybe cast a 1-mana Frenzy. As it stands, I think keep two blockers back. I guess we could still die to another Squee. So that's a reason to keep one more blocker back, but we also want to get the dots going. So I think this is still reasonable. But yeah, we're dead to another Phoenix Chick, a Burn Spell. So a lot of things. And the festivities also pretty nice with the Mechanized Warfare on the battlefield. And that'll do it. Yeah, that's a shame. We finally got our dots going, but sometimes in the aggro matchups it's a little too slow. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got lots of hasty one drops and a frenzy to clear a path. It's not a great hand without connecting the red dots. So I think I mulligan. Okay, this is better. And then we probably just keep all the creatures with connecting the dots. Our opponent on what could be green-white enchantments, which uh, yeah can be a problem if they've got some large life linker. Although Rafine's Tower might point towards something else. For now, I think Kumano. And then we'll have to decide whether Phoenix Chick or Swiss Spear picks up a plus one counter. And connecting the dots can also enable prowess up the beanstalk, we don't mind seeing. Okay, I think I'll uh, give Phoenix Chick the plus one counter. And then hopefully next turn we'll exile three cards right away. And our opponent's likely also playing with Leyline Binding, which can be an answer to our enchantment. So ideally we can cash it in before it gets exiled. It's going to be a tower into a naturalist, which is a good target for play with fire. And 
and then hopefully next turn we'll get to draw a lot of extra cards. Can get another attack in and then essentially draw six. And they're probably too low to deal with our enchantment. They need to deal with our creatures if they have removal. So does our opponent have the full domain? Still missing mountain. So Leyline Binding is two mana. And it's gonna be a restoration. That's fine. So no immediate board presence. And we found a Swiss Spear. Play the land down to attack. And then before damage, we can sack connecting the dots, maybe find a one mana instant to enable prowess. And get a fresh hand, and there we go, play with fire. And that'll do it, awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is decent, but not amazing. If we're up against another aggro deck, having Chi burn spells is good, Kumano into a 2-drop is always a nice start. But there's no real card advantage here. I'll still try it. Kumano on the play is hard to resist. And we might counter roll with a wicked roll. Okay, put into a green aggro deck. So the burn spells should be good, can maybe still wait a turn to answer the adaptive. And then if our opponent plays a 2-drop, we can answer both creatures. It's gonna be Wayfinder, 2-3 is actually kind of annoying here. So, take our draw step. Yeah, I guess we just attack all out and hope they play around a uh, Monstrous Rage. Opponent just blocking with the adaptive, reconsiders. Now double block scoundrel, alright, that's what we wanted to see. And then we still have double play with fire available. And yeah, we're gonna need it. 4-5 is a pretty big roadblock. Don't think we're close to burning the opponent out yet. This could eventually gain them life, although that's pretty far away. So yeah, what if we just double play with fire, opponent's at 10, we untap. That's not gonna work. Swiss Pierce, not a bad draw. Yeah, let's just attack all out. Do it the mono red way. Opponent gonna take it, so that's brave. So how much damage do we have if we double play with fire? That's opponent at 10, plus another 8, puts them to 2. Seems worthwhile. We also get to scry. And a Witch Docker Frenzy is a nice answer to Pulukronos. Okay. Evolving Adaptive is fine. Do they have some sort of fight spell that can maybe stabilize them? Scoundrel will still deal one damage on the way out thanks to the Wicked Roll. And yeah, looks like our opponent has two removal spells actually. Well, we can still take out Polychronos. Let me just main phase it. In case there's any tricks. And then force him to trump. And a light breeze will close out the game for us now. Sharp eyed rookie. There's still only one blocker in the face of two attackers. And that's enough for a concession, so yeah, we had to get pretty lucky with how our opponent reacted, but uh, we got there in the end. Awesome, and we get to rank up as well. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play, and no connecting the dots, but a fine hand nonetheless. Kumano into Felden, or we could double one drop. And it might be a mirror match. Yeah, the mirror can be tough, since we don't have those impactful three drops that the opponent does. Felden's still a good recipient for the plus one counter, since it's only gonna die to damage. And then Frenzy could be a very efficient removal spell. Opponent's got the Codebreaker, hits us for three. That one luckily dies to two damage. So how about Phoenix Chick plus Play With Fire? Just do it now, before they can enable Prowess. With etching in play, they can also deny the 1-1 one -one token from Spear Guard if it dies. And a Swiss Spear. Opponent still on the beatdown plan. Scoundrel also attacks. Nope. Just scoundrel staying back. Okay, so... What's our plan? We can... Attack, set up a one-mana Witchstalker Frenzy. Play Kumano. Could also keep Frenzy for the opponent's turn to maybe answer a 3-drop, although it does kind of rely on them attacking with multiple creatures, which may not be the case. So, a few ways we can go about it. I don't hate attack, Frenzy the etching, play Kumano, or we could keep up play with fire, that's also an option. We're at 13, so still relatively safe. So maybe getting Kumano down is worth it. And then we'll deal with the etching, so Spear Guard can maybe leave behind a token. Scoundrel does not jump, opponent falls to 3. And our opponent explodes, I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and there's no connecting the dots. But there is a decent amount of uh, early pressure, backed up by some removal. So I'll give it a shot. Hopeless Nightmare makes me discard. So against Mono Black, Play With Fire is kind of mediocre, since it doesn't hit the more impactful creatures. I'll lead with Phoenix Chick. Even though there are some removal spells that only hit one toughness creatures. Snail exiles a card, so opponent's definitely on a discard deck. And keep up the pressure. That uh, Restless Fortress could be a problem later. For now, just attack. I don't think we need to frenzy the snail. Although I might regret not using it if they make me discard two cards here. Alright, Trespasser, that's definitely more of a threat. So we get to attack, discard probably the Crucible to the War Trigger. We'll see if they trump. If they didn't trump, I would have considered casting play with fire just to push a bit more damage, but now I'll hang on to it. Second fortress, and now a Liliana. Well, we're not gonna be too upset if they plus here. You're telling me what you need. It's gonna minus two, get rid of a Phoenix chick. And then I probably should play with fire now, 
Because if we draw one mana creature, we might be able to get back Phoenix Chick from the graveyard. This can go face. Look for a one mana creature. Scapegoat will do. So we can play it and get back Phoenix Chick. Doesn't happen often that you get to return it. Points at five, and yeah, just gotta hope they don't have a board wipe. Alright, Deepest Betrayal, that's a problem too. 4-4 four, four, Flying Lifelink. Now we can use Scapegoat to attack past it, but uh, that's not necessarily a race we're gonna win. So, do not want to change our suspect. Hit for two. We had the opportunity to switch Phoenix Chick to the suspected creature. Would have allowed us to attack for one more. And we'll see if Restless Fortress gets busy. Would gain the opponent six life total if they attack. So this could be a good time to top deck or connecting the dots. Yeah, I guess our opponent being a discard deck, we should have expected the Deepest Betrayal to be in there. So, yeah, switching Phoenix Chick to be the suspect would have made more sense. If they keep the Deepest Betrayal back, we could top deck another Frenzy to answer it. So yeah, just a Fortress attacking. And Phoenix Chick is a draw. So switching Phoenix Chick to be the suspect doesn't really do much. But I guess it's probably still worth it, since at least Scapegoat will be able to block. So we're keeping up with the Restless Fortress. But I have to imagine we're gonna be in trouble. Connecting the dots off the top could still allow us to draw a lot of cards. Right of Oblivion now answers our suspected Phoenix Chick. Exiling it so it won't come back. And they can still get in with the Fortress. Alright, so... Witch Talker Frenzy, still one of our better draws. Play with fire. Now we could also play with fire our own creature. Doesn't work on Swiss Spear since that will gain prowess. So yeah, if we attack all out and they block Phoenix Chick, I can take out my own Phoenix Chick and actually have 5 damage. If they block a 1-1 one -one creature, we take it out. We also have lethal, so yeah, that should do it. So the only way they survive here, I think, is if they block Swiss Spear. Because we cannot deny the life gain. And there we have it, Exaxes. Wow. Alright, so we got to see this Mono Red Connecting the Dots aggro deck in action. And whenever we drew Connecting the Dots, it was quite impressive, since of course our deck is designed to leverage it and get the most out of it. Now, the games where we don't draw Connecting the Dots, it kind of feels like we're playing an underpowered version of Mono Red Aggro without some of those heavy hitting 2 and 3 drops. So, yeah, the deck is probably not as consistent as your classic Mono Red, but uh, there could be meta games where you prefer kind of the lower to the ground approach with Connecting the Dots to refuel. But uh, it's possible the deck will need an extra way to draw cards in addition to connecting the dots for those games where we don't find it. So we don't just run out of steam and end up with kind of an underpowered deck. But yeah, overall a fun experiment. And if you happen to open connecting the dots and draft, it can be worth a shot. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.